This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Wyndham Clark is your 2023 U.S. Open champion, and who could have possibly seen that coming other than our guest for today, Brandon Gandula. We're going to talk to him about the Travelers Championship, break down Wyndham's win, and hopefully see if Brandon can pick out another winner for us this week in the PGA Tour. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, joined here as mentioned by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. He is the senior managing editor of numberfire.com. And Brandon, you do your picks for Golf Digest every week and you send in a, a, a one straight up bet and one long shot. Twice this year, you've been on Wyndham Clark, 80 to 1 or longer, and he has come through. So is Wyndham Clark now officially your favorite golfer or do you are you still holding out on Xander Schauffele? Uh, Xander's still my guy because I relate to him a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was cool to, to learn a little bit more about Wyndham Clark. Uh, didn't get the full swing treatment, so didn't know a whole lot about him. Just knew that, uh, you know, statistically long term was on the upswing, and mm-hmm. you know, just shout out to the model to keep everything objective and, and find the value. Um, you know. It's tough coming off of a win. I mean, it's it's really it's like it's nice to come off a win, obviously, yeah. but then it feels like there's some pressure to follow it up, which is difficult. But you know, the the model is still trucking along, and and we'll see what we get uh, for this week at at a course that we've actually seen a lot. Um, now, I will say, you know, Wyndham Clark, phenomenal short game, and without that, uh, would not have won. But yeah. that's a big part of golf. And, uh, it was, it was really tough. Cause like, yeah, it I mean, I, I love, you know, having, having the model work out, obviously, you know, things of that nature, we'll just say, uh, but boy, I was, I was kind of fine with any of the outcomes if it was going to be Rory, right. uh, Ricky or Wyndham Clark. So it was kind of heartbreaking, but either way it would have been heartbreaking for somebody. Yeah. Uh, so I had the Wyndham outright based on, um, just loving Wyndham Clark. So I had that. I did hedge with Rory a bit during the day on Sunday, just kind of give myself a little bit of wiggle room, but also like, kind of like you said, I love Rory McIlroy and I don't want to root against him. So like it was partially financially motivated to give myself that, that, uh, that, increased chance of having a profit for the weekend, a really big profit, uh, whether it was Wyndham or, or Rory, but also I allowed myself to not root against Rory McIlroy, which is not something I typically want to do. So, if I could look at it just from like a golf fan perspective, it was awesome to see Wyndham Clark win. It was um, really fun to watch him wiggle his way out of some rough shots uh, at times. Um, Has some good fortune for sure. And it, it was fun to watch that, but it also was a bummer to watch Rory come close again. And once again, not quite get there. So my hope is that when odds for the open come up and I, I haven't, bet ahead of time uh for this but my hope is that rory can be like a defensible bet then so i can like bet with my heart and bet rory there so i can have both the financial motivation but also like the i just want this guy to finally win a freaking major again motivation as well yeah i I was rooting for for ricky too um yeah but as soon as i saw the stat where he made like 18 straight putts from within 15 feet it's like the odds of making that many five feet putts is very low. So it was, it was bound to come back to earth, but yeah, I mean, like the thing is, if you told me, you know, sometimes I think, Oh, if I learned this information before everything started, and if I learned that Wyndham Clark would lose strokes approach, there's no way, you know, um, that, that you would want to get there. But second off the tee, third around the green, fourth in putting, um, that's, it's an outlier, and I just I especially feel bad for Rory too because he would have beaten everyone by two shots, right? Otherwise, so right. 
So hopefully he can bounce back at the open. Um, hopefully I could be on him there. It'll be tough field, uh, given the way a lot of the studs played. I mean, Cam Smith looked really good. Um, obviously, Scotty Scheffler had his issues, but um, may not have played his best golf, but still finished third. So <laughs> it's kind of wild that a guy can not have his best week and still be third in a major against that kind of field. So I think the open should be a lot of fun. And so should the travelers. It's a designated event. We're going to talk about the field there, break down the course and get you ready for that here in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. We're here every weekday talking PGA. We're talking MLB. We're talking some NASCAR back this week as well. All right here in this same feed. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple podcasts or Spotify. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page page hit a homer with five dollar dinger tuesdays on FanDuel sportsbook each tuesday all customers will get five dollars in bonus bets for every home run hit by both teams when you place a 25 dollar to hit a home run wager on and they'll be gains and the best part about dinger tuesday is even if your bet loses FanDuel will pay you five dollars for every home run hit in that game there's no better place to bet America's pastime than America's number one sportsbook. Head over to your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to pick your home run hitter. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Max bonus $25. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, K at gamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelpline ma.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, they're going to TPC River Highlands this week, Brandon. And we'll talk about the course in a second, a course that we have a lot of data on. But this is a cross-country flight following a major. And a lot of the guys who are here played last week so given the intensity of a major given the cross-country flight here any pause for you at betting this event given that it is kind of a tight turnaround after a stressful week uh so this is the kind of question that you would kind of need to do some research into uh to answer with any sort of confidence otherwise you say oh yeah this is you know these guys are going to be drained you know anyone finishing top five they're gonna they're gonna phone it in uh the next week but um, we've had two recent West Coast U.S. Opens leading into the Travelers in recent years. Um, so I just dug back into those. In 2021, uh, Torrey Pines, Harris English won the Travelers after a solo third at the U.S. Open. Uh, Brooks Kepka was T4 at the U.S. Open and T5 at the Travelers. Uh, Guido Miliozzi, a T4 at the U.S. Open, T13 at the Travelers the next week. Of the 34 golfers making the cut at the U.S. Open and playing the Travelers the next week, 27 of them made the cut, which is almost 80%. Uh, 14 of those were top 25 the following week, so I think we're going to be fine in that in that regard. This is always something I want to do more research into anyway, is like form leading into a major, which when I've done sort of abbreviated studies on that, it's pretty overrated, the form like directly leading into a major uh, but then in 2019, just because I noticed that uh, your, your boy Chez uh, Revy won the Travelers after a T3 at the U.S. Open. Um, that number is pretty interesting this week. But yeah, 22, uh, 24 of 33 made the cut at the U.S. Open and played the next week at the Travelers, uh, made the cut 73%. So if you take that two-year sample, about 76% of golfers who played uh, the U.S. Open uh, and, and they made the cut. Um, so it, it's a, it's a good number. Um, and I don't think that we need to, to be concerned, but what is really interesting is that, uh, when this has happened, the person finishing third or tied for third 
went on to win next week. And um, we may or may not have just talked about the guy who finished third last week, <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. Yep. So, I mean, you know, that's a trend. I guess, but yeah, yeah. The reason it's a you're very make... superficial trend because he yeah. finishes third is pretty random. But <laughs> yeah. I think that the the takeaways there are interesting for two reasons. A, well, three reasons. A, didn't expect you to actually do data on this, so kudos to you for not mailing in a question. Why would I expect any different at this point? Two, it's interesting because the travel aspect didn't matter too much. But also three, I've always kind of been hesitant with guys coming off of situations where they're grinding hard during a major the following week because that's a lot of mental exertion i would be exhausted and so i project onto them that they would not be able to perform well the next week but they do so i think that there are two very interesting aspects where both of which allow us to proceed here with like kind of playing things straight up so let's talk about playing things straight up here at tpc river highlands one of the shortest courses on the tour so which data are you emphasizing for this week irons accuracy and putting basically um driving accuracy is a plus here that does mean a more random event just because more golfers can contend shorter hitters can contend just talked about uh ches Reeve, uh doing doing his thing harris english not particularly like long off the tee we think of him more as an accurate driver then we do a long driver Data golf, something I talk like it's a source that we use a lot. They have a course fit table and it shows first of all, like what stats tend to matter here. Um, they have a course table tool as well, which shows a bunch of different stats, like how hard or easy it is to gain strokes or fairway width and all that kind of stuff. But uh, what one thing that they do is they take the field and they show an expected strokes gain differential from a player's baseline based on the course fit. And if you have your, Sort of your shorter hitters in the field this week, your Ryan Moore's, Ches Reeves, they're getting a boost of like 0.35 strokes per round, um, which over four rounds is almost one and a half strokes, which is pretty substantial just based on you know their baseline relative to how this course should play. And then you look at the flip side. It's not just about the driving distance here, but some of the bigger hitters, some of the bigger names – uh, of course, Roy McIlroy, now Wyndham Clark, big name for sure, losing about two and uh, sorry, 0.25 strokes per round. So like if you just kind of compare Rory's advantage to, you know, Ches Reeve, that's like a 0.6 stroke per round gap closing. So you kind of do that across the field. It gets a lot tighter. The shorter hitters can contend. The longer hitters still can play well, um, but it, it's pretty noteworthy. Uh, for this week as like you said this tends to play as the shortest course it just depends on like what the official yardage rolls in at but uh, yeah it's super short you got to hit the fairways more often than not um and yeah it's a it's just kind of one of those weeks where we're gonna have a, a sp- like a s- sort of a smattering of different player archetypes at the top of the field now you know with the field being as strong as it is you still would expect that the better golfers float toward the top but we're going to see some of the the outliers in the in the the outliers of the shorter hitters who are having the rest of their game click go to the top of the board which is different than saying like definitely target the short hitters cuz you know th- there's there're a lot typically strokes gain total it correlates pretty strongly with driving distance and as always it's just turning knobs Turning knobs a bit, um, you're not just sorting by accuracy and stuff like that, but turning knobs up a bit, turning some knobs down and making adjustments based on that. Now, one of the takeaways that you mentioned is that more guys can compete. Despite that, we got Scotty Scheffler as a favorite this week. He is now 6-1 to one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Scheffler open at 7, shortened to plus 550. He is now back out to 6-1. to one. He's obviously amazing, and he does have good accuracy. And he's golfing like a psycho right now. It actually did actually gain strokes putting uh, this past week for the first time in feels like a decade. But it is a short number, and a lot of guys can compete. So any lingering value for you on Scheffler, Brandon, at 6-1? to one? Uh, So I have him around like what would be plus 620. Okay. So at 7-1, to one, it was nice. At, at plus 550, no. Uh it's just one of those realities where like currently with Scotty Scheffler's putter, 
it's a generally like a fair number, more or yeah. less. If Scotty Scheffler were to bury some putts, then he should be like probably five to one. Um, and, and one of the things that is kind of ironic is that I feel like when Scotty Scheffler was playing his sort of best and he was ripping off all of those wins, you know, winning the Masters, um, Arnold Palmer, waste management, he was putting really well. Mm-hmm. Like the putter was hot. Then it cooled off a bit and then it got kind of bad and then it stayed. I'll call it like neutral because, yeah, he's like losing strokes putting, but over the past 50 rounds with field strength adjustments, Data Golf has him losing 0.13 strokes per round on the greens. Not very helpful, but it's not as bad as people want to think. Right. And his tee to green game is so good that, like, if you think that Scotty's going to, you know, putt above his baseline, he's very – I mean, if he did that, if he putted a little bit better this past week, he would, he'd have won. Um, that's kind of, You know, that's that's kind of how golf tournaments tend to, to work is, man, if this person just putted a little bit better – data one so uh but yeah i mean he's gaining 3.29 strokes per round from tee to green play over the past 50 rounds and no one is no one else is above uh 2.09 so <laughs> that's 1.2 shots per round better with the tee to green so it's it's always scary with with how good scotty is right now um i wouldn't bet him uh personally at that number but it's really not an egregious number either no, it's there for a reason. He got that down from seven for a reason. Yeah, this all makes a lot of sense. With Scotty Scheffler being fair value plus six twenty for you, that means he is sucking up a lot of win equity. Though, does that mean that other outrights for you this week are pretty unappealing? Or are there any that stand out to you? Uh, what's your view of the outrights for this week? Yeah, not not loving it um, this week. That's not to say I don't see a few names that both the model likes and I see a case for. Um, one of them being Colin Morikawa, uh, 25 to 1. Feels a little, you kind of want a little bit more, um, but extremely accurate. Sixth in accuracy over the past 50 rounds. Second in approach over the past 50 rounds as well. If you look at his event log, he just, he is striping the irons. And it's another one of the situations where if he can putt better, uh, there's no reason he can't win an event like this. He just, I don't know with more Kawa. When I feel like once he gets rolling, he, he's good to go. Whereas like Scotty's a little more even the floor is yeah. a lot higher with Scotty Scheffler, but uh, call him more Kawa definite interest at that number. Tony Fino as well, even though we don't think of Tony Fino as very accurate, he's really not pretty. He's like, he's really not errant 35 to one on Fandle specifically is a good number. Uh, be hard to find him at that number in other places. So that's appealing for me. I have him at 32 to one, even with bumping him down for the course adjustments. Uh, the putter is pretty cold, but the underlying stats are pretty neutral. He's basically 50th percentile on putting from within 15 feet and over 15 feet. So he's not getting lucky on the greens. Like I've seen him in the past. And then some am 50 to one. I'm at 44 to one. He's accurate off the tee 16th over the past 50 rounds. Great combined short game. Top 25 there. Missing a lot of cuts, so that number is coming down. Uh, and that's just one of those situations where the model looks at, you know, the past year of data, does a bunch of adjustments, recency weighting. So even with that, you know, the weaker form uh, more recently, it's just saying like, hey, at this point, it's a good number on Sung JM. So uh, that's typically why I love the model, because you wouldn't think of Sung JM at all. But you look at the last year, um, do all those adjustments. It's it's finally to the point where it's a good number. Yeah, Sung J M fifty to one right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Tony Finau thirty five to one. Colin Morikawa twenty five to one. It sounds like based on the way you were talking, Morikawa is your favorite of that bunch. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I'm going to take a stand with Morikawa um, this week in particular. It makes a lot of sense uh, for his game this week. If again, if you just look uh, at his. These are per round numbers with field strength adjustments. Here is uh, stroke gain approach numbers 1.58, 2.14, 1.22, 1.2, 2.2, 1.1, 0. 0.95. Like you have to go back to not even in 
this cal- or not even in this season. The Genesis Scottish Open, according to Data Golf, so July tenth, twenty twenty two is the last time he lost strokes with his iron play. Yeah. At and a certain he'll point, be better what? positioned off the tee this week than usual because it's a less distance heavy course. The putter is coming around a bit. Um, gained in in his two in two straight events. You know he's like a twenty fifth percentile putter from within fifteen feet, which ain't great, but it's also not completely dreadful. So I think it's an interesting week for Morikawa for sure at that number. Okay, again Morikawa twenty five to one where Brandon is looking there. What about the non outrights? Any uh, prop bets or finishing positions you like this week? Got to go with Brian Harmon. Uh, I'll keep it a top twenty. At, at plus 320 just because it's a tough field but the irons you're not going to love what you see long term from him uh but very accurate off the tee good short game he's got five top tens here in 12 starts he just plays the course well and it's one of the situations where i'm willing to buy into course form because he's a pretty good golfer overall uh whenever the course is right and then i got some group bets i like uh group c I'm going to, you know, we talked about the the narrative, the the travel, the fatigue narrative. Uh, Ricky Fowler um, at plus 240 over Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, Wyndham Clark and Siwoo Kim. I have Ricky at about plus 215 here, so I like the number. I think that, you know, Ricky's game overall is trending up in such a big way. I think that Wyndham Clark would have to take a step back, and he's not a good uh He's not the best course fit by any means. He's one of the more like expected negatives, uh, according to Data Golf. Uh, I, you know, I know you love your boy Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, but and for Wyndham. me, <laughs> and Wyndham, <laughs> and so Siwoo. Why would you? And this is like you, this is an attack on me. Find, like a, find then, this is rude. I mean, find a group then uh, where you don't have any. I will. We like everyone, basically. No. I'll I'll work on this. Give me a name you don't like on the PGA Tour right now. Uh most of them left. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So... <laughs> uh that's tough. Another likable uh name here, Group F. Tom Kim plus two twenty mm-hmm. against Hideki Matsuyama, Harris English, Minwoo Lee. I mean, love all those guys too, right? Like <laughs> um Especially Min Woo. He's got a ton of great finishes in majors already. It's 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 pretty interesting. I so regret not going heavier at him at DF and DFS instead of freaking Mito. Like what a moron Jim is. What an idiot. Um, I have Kim around plus one ninety for this one. Super accurate off T. You know, these other guys in this group can go low, uh, but it's a good course fit for Tom Kim and his game's coming back around. And then final one, group H, uh, the lovable Keegan Bradley. Um, plus 200 against Gary Woodland, Austin Eckroat, and Ludwig Aberg. With Eckroat and Aberg, um, two of the big up and comers, especially Ludwig. Everyone loves uh, Ludwig. Can't stop talking about Ludwig. But uh, Gary Woodland's game, uh, he's got some really, really bad putting splits. Six percentile from within 15 feet. Don't really love that. Keegan, more or less dialed in. Um, and again, my model sees value on him, uh, in that group. Okay. So the non outrights were Brian Harmon, top 20 at plus 320. Got Tom Kim in group F, plus 220. Ricky Fowler, plus 240 in group C. Keegan Bradley, plus 200 in group H, the bets Brandon likes for this week. That's all we got here for the Travelers Championship preview. I've got to go recap last week's show, which is always more fun when Brandon gives out an 85 to 1 outright winner. But Brandon, I appreciate the time as always. Uh good luck to you with the Travelers and we'll see if you can run it back with another outright for this week. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh I'm always trying to. That is the goal and you've done a great job with it so far. So appreciate it as always. And we'll talk to you for the DFS side of things in just a bit. That is Brandon Gadula again. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13 and find his work over at numberfire.com. Let's go through last week's show here and recap the week-long recommendations that we had from here on the show. The first one, of course, is the U.S. Open. Brandon Gadula breaking down that one and did hit Wyndham Clark, the winner, 85-1. to He was also uh, on Wyndham Clark to finish top 10 at seven to one. So whether you did the top 10 bet at seven to one, the outright 85 to one, 
good payday for you. Congrats to those of you who followed Brandon's advice there. And again, I was happy to have it myself as well. So good week for sure. Uh, even with no NASCAR on the schedule. Other outrights of Brandon were John Rahm 11 to one, Xander Schauffele 19 to one, Tony Finau 37 and Jason Day at 50 to one for the outrights. As for non outrights, Brandon like Tyrrell Hatton as a top Englishman at plus 280. Tommy Fleetwood took that honor. Uh, Fleetwood went bananas on Sunday to uh, finish T5. Hatton was 27th overall. Brandon had Vincent Norman as a top suite at 2-1. to one. He tied Alex Norman uh, as they both missed the cut. Uh, so dead heat rule, rules applied there. Uh, they actually had the same score in missing the cuts. Not just both missing the cut, but uh, dead heat rules apply in there. And Brandon had Brian Harmon as a top lefty at minus 120. Harmon was the only lefty to make the cut. Uh, Phil Nicholson and Hank Lee Biota both missed the cut, so that one cashed as well. Overall, awesome week. Uh, great analysis by Brandon, as always. Fantastic to have him on the show here each week because he has been on a heater with picking golf outrights so far this year. My lone racing bet last week was in Formula One with no NASCAR last week. I had Yuki Sonoda at 2-1 to one to finish top 10 in Montreal. Whole weekend, kind of rough for Yuki. He didn't get the tires right in qualifying. He started 16th, and it was kind of a jumbled up order, so that wasn't necessarily a death sentence. But Yuki never really made up a ton of ground, never really pushed for a top 10. He finished 14th there, uh, so no cash. So nothing on the F1 side of things, but we do get NASCAR back this week in Nashville, so that will be fun. Looking forward to that. And again, all is a lot easier to handle when you get a Wyndham Clark 85-1 to to win uh, the U.S. Open. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. One final thank you to Brandon Gadula for swinging by, breaking down his thoughts on the Travelers Championship. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. Find his work over at numberfire.com. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your PGA bets for the Travelers Championship. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some MLB. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.